boys and girls so today i will be continuing on the nmr spectroscopy and that too my focus is on the principle now uh, yesterday i i have not completed the principle but i gave you some details regarding um, what are nucleons and uh, what do these nucleons do that means what uh, properties they have so nucleons i have told uh, that they uh, they have some magnetic properties but all nucleons they will not possess this property so just i had made the your concepts clear regarding the nucleons the magnetic properties the spins and how they will interact when they are placed in a magnetic field and finally when such atoms are made to be bombarded with the low energy radio waves what happens so let me again revise for you all the concept of the spin of nucleons the nucleons are nothing but the neutrons and the protons now just like the electrons the nucleons like the protons and the neutrons they all they also spin so that means they have two configuration either they spin in the uh, uh, clockwise direction or they spin in the anti clockwise direction so that means both protons and neutrons they are spinning in the respective places now this among the protons and the neutrons it is the protons because they of their charge they uh, behave like small magnets in the absence of a external magnetic field but what happens is that the magnetic orientation of these protons are aligned in different directions and hence the net magnetic field is zero now what happens is that when such nucleons are placed in uh, between the poles of a magnet or they are placed in the presence of an external magnetic field what happens is that the nucleons or the protons because they are magnets they start to align either in the direction of the magnetic field or against the direction of the magnetic field so that means what happens is that the externally applied magnetic field helps to split the protons based on how they are aligned with the external magnetic field so this is the basic essence of the nmr now do all nucleons uh, can can all these nucleons be used by the nmr spectro spectrophotometer no so only th what are those nucleus or what are those nucleons which can help in the uh, nmr now we know that yesterday i told you that there are three categories of nucleons or the nucleus now having a first of all an atom having a odd mass number having a odd number of nucleons the spin is fractional now uh, there are three categories here the spin quantum number is half the spin quantum number is 3 by 2 and the spin quantum number is 5 by 2 now the examples of the atoms exhibiting this is given here similarly the nuclei or the atoms having a even mass number but having a odd number of protons and neutrons such atoms will have a spin which is a integer now the examples are given here similarly the, the atoms with having a even mass number but having a even number of protons and neutrons in such cases the spin quantum number is zero now among all these nucleons only the uh, hydrogen 1 c13 phosphorus uh, fluorine 19 and phosphorus th 31 all these atoms they are used in the nmr so that means the most randomly used or the most widely used uh, atoms in the nmr is the uh, hydrogen one in such cases the uh, nmr is told as the hydrogen nmr and the second is the c13 nmr that is the if the if you are using a atom that is c13 now let us come to as i told you the the concept of the nucleons the concept of the spinning nucleons and the concept of what happens when such nuclei are placed in a magnetic field so only in these atoms that means hydrogen 1 c13 uh, fluorine 19 and phosphorus 31 they have a spin quantum number equal to half so only these at for these atoms what happens is that the the spinning nuclei that means the protons in such cases are behaving as magnets and when they are placed in an external applied magnetic field we find that there is a split of the protons some protons are 
aligned in the direction of the magnetic field they are called as the alpha spin state and some are placed anti to the uh, direction of the external magnetic field and they are aligned the they are told as the beta spin state so the difference between these two energy states that is delta e now that is very small equal to that is less than equal to 0.1 calories now this is what we will talk about now when such nucleons that is when such protons in such conditions when they are bombarded with low energy radio waves what happens so as i said yesterday this all these things have been uh, revised yesterday now let what happens is that when you are giving a radio wave to such a atom then and only when the condition is that when the delta e that means the difference between the alpha state and the beta state the energy difference when this matches with the energy of the radio wave then what happens under this condition is that the proton at the alpha spin state will absorb the energy and move to the beta spin state that means it is jumping to the higher energy state that means the proton in the alpha spin state jumps to the beta spin state now similarly the beta spin state releases the energy thus gained and comes back to the alpha spin state so what happens that the protons they are flipping they are flipping from the alpha state to the beta state and again from the beta state to the alpha state so this transition of the proton that means first of all in the presence of an external magnetic field and second when radio waves are bombarded into such atoms so that means this spin the flip of the spin that gives rise to a nmr signal so now let us come to the NMR spectrum. Yesterday I told you that the NMR spectrum is nothing but the plot of the intensity of the radio waves that is intensity of absorption of the radio waves which is plotted in the y axis and the x axis here is the frequency of the radio wave absorbed. So the horizontal axis represents the frequency of the absorbing radiation that means the protons they are absorbing the radiation at a particular frequency that means that frequency is it should match the frequency of the radio waves and under such conditions the protons they are they are flipping the or they flip the spin state and this transition of the flip state is give, gives rise to the signal and this is a signal so the difference in the frequency absorbed by the proton of the sample and the proton of the standard is known as the chemical shift so this is a new concept that i will be focusing more in more details in this uh, lecture now what is this chemical shift so first of all before i go to the chemical shift let us uh, uh, look at this diagram this is the nmr spectrum and here at the at the apps at the extreme right there is a signal corresponding to the tms so tms is the standard that we are using for nmr so that means the peak of the tms that is assigned a value of zero that means the frequency is zero so we are aligning we are aligning the frequency of the tms signal at zero so that means our sample protons that means the proton of the atom for which we are going to determine its structure so that means the sample protons they are having the frequency to the left of the signal of the tms protons so the more the that means the distance uh, from the TMS signal of this peak. So that distance, the difference in the distance uh, between the TMS peak and the sample proton peak that is called as the chemical shift. So that means it is the shift of the signal with respect to the signal of the TMS. And this is denoted as delta. So that means the, the, the symbol of chemical shift is delta and it is measured in parts per million. Now the, the formula of this is the delta value equal to the frequency of the sample proton minus frequency of the standard proton into 10 to the power 6 and whole divided by the frequency of the spectrophotometer that means the frequency of the instrument. Now this 
value is represented in the x axis so that means in general the frequency of the instrument is constant it can never vary so what varies is the frequency of the signal of our sample protons so the sig the uh, frequency of the signal of the tms that is a standard that is constant the frequency of the instrument is constant so what is varying is the frequency at which the sample protons are placed so that means now let us uh, discuss in more details because this is the interpretation of the NMR spectrum is very vital because almost all types of information can be obtained from this NMR spectrum. So first is how many peaks are there in this spectrum. So the number of peaks so that means if, if our spectrum is having two peaks so that means it represents that how many types of different protons are present in our sample. If our sample, if our organic compound has two different types of protons, so that means each type of proton will absorb at a different frequency. So that means each proton will hence give a different signal in the NMR spectrum. So if your spectrum is showing two signals, you know that your sample has got two different types of protons or two different types of hydrogens because uh, our syllabus is concerned with the uh, hydrogen NMR, not the C13 NMR. So that means we have to first identify the number of different types of hydrogen our organic compound has. And that can be determined from the different peaks in the spectrum. Now, uh, here it, here it, uh, two different terms are given here. One is the shielding and the deshielding and second is the upfield and the downfield. So what does this mean? If our signal is placed more closely towards the TMS signal, then we say that our hydrogens are in the upfield. But if the signal is placed to the extreme left or far away from the TMS signal, we say that the signal is placed downfield. So, this is the position of the signal. Now, let us come to what do you mean by shielding and deshielding. We will understand this concept in the coming slides but till now I hope you have understood I am going very slow for you people only. So now the next slide is saying what type of information can be obtained from a hydrogen NMR spectrum. So as I said first of all you have to count the number of signals. So the different signals mean that how many different types of individual protons are present. So that means how many hydrogens are present in your sample not how many how many different types of hydrogens are present in your sample so this is the first information we will be going into individual details and for you all to understand the second information is the position of the signal so that means each signal the position we count with respect to the tms signal so this is the second type of information and the position of the signal is known as the chemical shift. I hope you have understood the meaning of chemical shift. Now third type of information is the relative areas under the signals. So that means you have to count the area of each signal and this, this will tell you the information about how many protons of each type. Again I will explain in more detail in the coming slides. So this what this spectrum that you are seeing that is a simplified low resolution spectrum of ethanol. So this is a low resolution that means under low resolution you have these three types of information that is the number of signals, the position of the signals and the relative areas under the signals. But under high resolution that means you have to obtain this spectrum under high resolution. So we get the fourth type of information that is the splitting pattern. So that means each peak will, we will find that it has splitted. So this splitting pattern tells us information about how many neighboring types of protons are there. So again I, I know you, have, you, you could not have understood what all these terms means but I will be telling you in more details regarding these in the coming slides. But I hope you have understood in this uh, lecture the concept of chemical shift, the concept of uh, uh, upfield and the downfield and the concept of how many information can, you, can be obtained from a hydrogen NMR spectrum. So with this I end this lecture.
I hope you have understood it. Again, I repeat, if you have any doubts, please write your comments in the Google.